Quad Nathenia, aka Spider, how's it going, Gary? Good morning, everyone. So with Quad Nathenia, tell us, how, does it, how did it all start? How did you get the part of Spider? Um, I left college on the Friday, and on the Monday I got a phone call from my new agent who said, uh, had I ever heard of a band called The Who? <laughs> and I said, I think my dad has. Um, and then I went down to Soho to meet the casting director, Patsy Pollock, and Esther Charkham. And they said, um, we'd like to, um, that, that was like the first wave of auditions. So they were seeing everybody. Um, and I went in and sort of showed off a bit. And uh, they asked me to go back to meet Frank Rodham, the director. Um, and he said, um, did I know anything about mod culture and, and everything else? And I said, not really. I was a punk rocker. That was my thing. Um, but anyway, he, he, he sort of thought that I would fit in with the gang that he was trying to put together. And they weren't looking for actors per se, they were looking for characters, I think. So obviously it must have worked because um, by the end of the week I'd been signed up. Yeah, I mean, remind us for people who don't remember, what happens to Spider in the film? Gets the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... Sorry to bring that up. You know. Oh, sorry, yes. Um, yeah, um, Spider's... A, a, the, he's like the youngest member of the gang. And even though they take the mickey out of him all the time, he's, they're, they're his, you know, he's, he's like the they're kid. They're protective over him. Yeah, very protective. So when he gets beaten up, they go looking for the rockers that did it. And that's where Kevin beat, you know what I mean? That's when uh, Ray Winston... Get it. So yeah, he beats up his mate. Yeah, it's an didn't want to do so. that, but there you go. No, but the, the actual getting beaten up was brilliant because we did it all night. We we spent all night doing it, and uh, with the um, with Gary Holton. Do, do you remember Gary Holton from Alveda's own pet? Um, and so Gary was the rocker who was to beat me up. And we just had so much fun doing that, um, and we were we were great friends, and we were in a band together and everything and, until he sadly died. But. Uh, but um, yeah, so yeah, we made you know we made lifelong friends on that movie, so and we're still friends today. And what do you think it is about that movie that still, even today, people just love it and they, it's such an iconic movie, isn't it? I, I I really don't know. I mean, the thing about it, we didn't when the film came out, it got terrible reviews. Um, it didn't really go down well, and I, I think it was um, around '93, nine, maybe a bit later. That's when the DVD came out. And that's when it really took off. And I was working in, I'd, I'd given up acting by then, I'd, I'd, got, I'd got bored with it. So I was working in, in, I was writing music for TV commercials and having a great time. Um, and then I got a phone call um, and my receptionist said, there's uh, some guy on the phone wants to talk to you about some film called Quadrophenia. So I picked up the phone, he said, is that Gary Shale? I said, he said, he's Gary Shale who played Spider. I said, yeah, that's me. He said, oh, well. Uh, we're holding a, a launch for the DVD in Brighton, we'd love to take you. And we all got on the train and we hadn't seen each other for about, I don't know, 10 years. And we're all sitting on the train thinking, what the hell is this all about? You know, we're all flying down to Brighton and thinking no one's going to be there. And when we got there, the, the place was packed and we sort of all looked at each other and thought, well, hang on a minute. Um, and now, you know, it's just, it's, it's part of my daily life, you know, so, um, yeah. The way of life is the... Absolutely, the yeah. Goes. I mean, I've met so many people because of that film, and, and even today, I mean, you know, being here, this, when I, um, they're over there, actually, the, uh, the Staples, um, you know, when they invited me to this, I was just so chuffed, because it was like, you know, the 50th anniversary of Trojan as well and the 40th anniversary of the Lambrettas and the 40th anniversary of Quadrophenia, so it's all come round really. So. A lot of landmarks, and I read in the programme that you used to have a really big collection of Trojan rare reggae Yeah, no, that vinyls, was, that's you? a thing, that was my thing. It was like, you know, uh, I think the first um, Trojan record my mum bought me was Young, Gifted and Black, Bob and Marcy, you know, and I have still love that record. And, you know, all the Trojan, you know, you know, the more Trojan you had in your record collection, the more parties you got into. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a big part of my life. So, with the film, as I said, it's so iconic, people love it today, but as you were doing it, you probably didn't realise what you were onto, did you? Um, I, was, I did a radio interview once with um, Chris Evans on Radio 2, and they had a, a phone in, and someone said, 
So, um, did you know that when you made Quadrophenia that it was going to be iconic and that you were, you know, it would be as big as it was 40 years later? And I said, yes, I did actually. I said, I can remember my mum waking me up on the first days of filming and saying, for fuck's sake, go out and make a cult movie, will you? Right? And you don't, you just have no idea. I mean, we, when we made the film, we were just kids. I mean, I was 18. Um, Phil Daniels had his uh, 19th birthday while we were doing it um, and we just thought this is brilliant and also you know meeting Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey they were superstars um, you know real stars um, and so we knew that they, it, that it was special we knew that what we were doing was different and uh, you know don't forget like Sting I, I remember this is this is a true story it was about five o'clock in the morning and we were on our way to location down in Brighton and we were sitting in the back of the car and the record of the week was Can't Stand Losing You by The Police. And it came on the radio and Sting was sitting in the back of the car and he turned around and he went, that's me, that's me, listen to this, listen to this. And we all went, you're joking. And we were like, God, that's really good. And it was like, so no one, you know, the first time we went to see The Police, I think was at a, a little club in Covent Garden. There was like 12 people there and it was us. You know, and within two years, he was playing in front of three quarters of a million people in Guatemala. So, no, you know, it was a, a special time for all of us. Yeah, and the soundtrack, I mean, by the Who, it's one of the best, isn't it? One of the best movie soundtracks, I believe. Um, the first time we ever heard that, and we, I was round at Trevor Laird's house, the guy who plays Ferdy, you know, in Gun Out. Um, and we sat there and he said, oh, we've got the album, we've got, you know, we should listen to this. And we put it on and it, it, astounding. I mean, I think it is, without a doubt, that it's... so much to the movie, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, uh, Townsend, what can you say? The guy's a genius. So, a um, bit of a nut job, but a brilliant, <laughs> great. A lot of them are. <laughs> so, you're here for the weekend? You were here last night, wasn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I was here. We, we got here in just in time to see the, the Lambrettas strutting their stuff. And Paul Windsor, I was standing on the side of the stage and as soon as he saw me, he upped his game. <laughs> We've known each other 40 years. We were actually signed to the same record company, Rocket Records, Elton John's company. And there's a picture somewhere of us all standing outside the office looking about 12 years old with hair. So, uh, but yeah, we've known each other, me, Dougie and uh, Paul Windsor, we've known each other for, well, four years. And you're going to be judging the scooter show today, am I talking That's such a horrible thing, that's so awful. It's like, you know, what's your favourite scooter? I mean, it's, they're all, there's one out there. It's going to be tight, isn't it? It's quite well, a Well, it is, you just eventually just go, oh, that one. You know, they're all fantastic. So, so anyway, unless someone's going to give me a bribe. <laughs> So, um, are you going to be here for much of the weekend left? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, weekend? we're here tonight. I'm going to be, um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but I'm going to be doing something with Drew tonight, Drew Stanshaw. Uh, he does a, a thing around the country called Quadrophenia Night. So I think they're going to show the movie tonight. And, oh, uh, brilliant. And uh, we'll um, be chatting. Yeah. I think they've got some quadrophenia DJs as well, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've been to a couple of them, they're always good fun, so um, yeah, it should be a good night. Oh, we'll look forward to that. Well, has anybody got any questions for Gary from quadrophenia? Well, we covered everything. Oh, we've got one over there. Hang on a sec, we've got to get the radio mic. Oh, there's a pregnant pause in, yeah. One, two, here we go, turn it up. Yeah, I want Can you elaborate on your comment about Pete Townsend? Well, Pete Townsend, back in those days, it, it, without, I mean, you know, I can be totally honest about it, because we all are, but back in those days, like, um, you know, Townsend was drinking, you know, so we were all waiting to meet Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey and Keith and, and everybody else, and they just fell into the room. They were like, that's, and we were like, oh my God, you know, these are our bosses. Um, I remember um, we were in, I, was, I shared a hotel room with Mark Winger and we used to call him Brain Damage because he was just mad and um, one morning um, I was in the shower and Mark Winger said I, I want to get in the shower and I wouldn't let him in so he tried to burn me out with a Batman comic um, he set fire to the curtain which was like you know one of those plastic curtains and all the black plastic went up to the ceiling and then he ran the sink 
and stood back and jumped into the sink. And the sink came away from the wall and there was just water pouring into our room. So we just left. We just got in the car and went and thought we're going to have to go back sooner or later. And when we got back to the hotel there was just plastic tarpaulin all around the outside. There's no one had let us, we didn't let anyone know and we just flooded the whole first floor of this hotel. So then we were, we were marched into this room where uh, Bill Kerbishley, the manager of The Who, Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey, and we stood there like naughty schoolboys while they told us off. And we were like, hang on a minute, didn't you guys use to like total, you know, throw dynamite down toilets and drive Rolls Royces into swimming pools? And they were like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the bill for that was about 30 grand and um, so um, yeah we, we had our moments but uh, yeah I don't think you could ever match Keith Moon although we tried and of course with The Who they used to always smash up their equipment didn't they after every gig live uh, yeah but you see this is there, there's this whole thing uh, Pete Townsend was into this kind of German um, kind of dem demonstrative art um, and he always said that when he smashed the guitar, it was a statement against the, the art world and all that, which is all very deep. <laughs> where I just thought, you know, he just, just got the ump. Doing it for a bit of fun, really. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. But then, no, apparently there was method in that. And um, yeah, just read Pete Townsend's book. He explains it much better than me. We've got another question for Gary. Anybody else for a one? Or? We good? Yeah? We good? Yeah, great. Well, thanks a lot. It's been great talking to you, Gary, and we'll see you at the festival. And you're judging the scooter, scooters today. Are you yeah, going to yeah. be able to uh, pick one out? I'll pick one out. Yeah. <laughs> Put your hands together for Gary Sherwood. Thank you, everybody. Lovely to see you. Thanks, Gary.